Welcome while you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you have welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And today, our guest is Anthony mm -hmm. DiStefano. He is a best-selling Catholic author of many books, over 25, for adults and children. And his newest book that we're going to talk about today is How the Angels Got Their Wings. And this beautiful book is available at EWTNRC.com. Well, we just love Anthony DiStefano. Yes. I mean, his writings... Uh, the books that he's put out both for children and for adults and we've of course worked with Anthony for years at Priest for Life, beautiful man um, and doing a, I think he has 25 books or more now that mm -hmm. he's written and I remember back when I think his first book and uh, he let me read the galley copy or whatever it is, Travel Guide to Heaven. Yes. Is that right? That's Fantastic. a great book. Fantastic. Then he made a children's book, Travel Guide to Heaven. That Travel Guide to Heaven helped nurture your mother with a terminal illness, and she sure read that meant so much to her. She was facing her impending death. And uh, so he's fantastic. He's doing a great job in the area of catechesis, mm -hmm. um, which we have so many complaints over the years. Probably they're less and less, you know, I wasn't catechized properly and this and that. And so these books for children in particular are just so wonderful, so informative. Your parents can be grandparents reading it to them elaborating further on it. So he's raising up generations of, of believers uh, in, in the faith, in the Catholic faith. And, and it's also not just the Catholic faith. I mean, many of his works really written for any Christian you know, person can mm -hmm. get so much out of it. They're not that Catholic Catholic, uh, but for anyone, I think the angel book, even people that might not be believers would like to read it. Well, and it's a beautiful book. It's extremely well done with the illustration. We'll talk about the illustrator that has done this. But the beautiful thing is that, you know what? Angels are real. Mm. This isn't like a storybook about a fiction character. This is real. Angels are real. And you and I get to participate. And we are assisted by the presence of angels in mm. our everyday lives. Yeah. And this book illustrates it so that it gives you a, a window, almost like into the supernatural, yeah. as is to say, is could that really look like yeah. that? Is that really where they are? Yeah. It's beautiful. You'll be encouraged uh, and blessed. Personally, I need to learn more about angels. You know, I know them, I believe, maybe I've experienced them, you've experienced them more than I have, but I don't think about them enough and, and, and ask their prayers enough. So, How the Angels Got Their Wings, Anthony Stefano. It's gonna be a great blessing to you. You're gonna wanna know about this book and share it with your family. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy. And today our guest is Anthony DiStefano. He is a best-selling Catholic author of over 25 books. And the books are written for children and adults. But his newest book is How the Angels Got Their Wings. And this beautiful book you can purchase at EWTNRC.com or you can visit anthonydestefano.com and just go to his website. Well, Anthony, we're delighted to have you back on at home, a very um, busy man and um, an author of many, many books. I don't know how you find the time to do all this, but you do, and we are ever so grateful. And we love this book. I have a, a, a beautiful attraction to the supernatural and angelic hosts. I love that. And so I love that you uh, decided to write a book about angels. So tell our family why you wrote this book, How the Angels Got Their Wings. Well, uh, for many reasons. The most obvious reason is that the story of the angels is a fascinating story. It's very entertaining, not only for adults, but especially for children. I mean, it's got everything. It's got a battle between good and evil. It's got these uh, powerful uh, characters. Sorry about that. It's got powerful characters. He is characters. a busy man. <laughs> uh, 
it's it's uh, it's it's much more entertaining, uh, much more compelling than any uh, comic book movies or any of these superhero cartoons yeah. that children are watching. But as you both were saying uh, before the broad be before, it's a true story. It's mm -hmm. not make believe. It's not fairy tale. Uh, it, it, and the invisible world really is real. It really is true. And uh, it's very important to teach our children that now so that they don't grow up into being a secular materialist atheist, you know. And the final reason I wrote it is not only because it's a good story and not only because it's a true story, but because angels can help us. Mm -hmm. They can help children. One of their jobs is to assist uh, human beings. They, 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 they were created to help God carry out His will, and one of, the, one of the parts of that will is helping us in our lives right here. So we've got these magnificent helpers that we believe are with us from the womb to, uh, to our point of our natural death. And uh, if we really want to help our children, which we want to do, then one of the ways to do that is to encourage them to enlist the help mm -hmm. of their angels. Yeah. So, again, it is, if we want to help the children, why not let them plug into this incredible power source? Amen. Well, we're going to unpack a lot of what's in this book and what you're sharing here. Tell us a little bit about the illustrator. Uh, you have so many books. I don't remember seeing Antonio Javier. Capro, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but uh, is he new to your illustrator list? And how did you guys join up? And he's, he's done a beautiful, beautiful job. Uh, his name is Antonio Javier Caparo. Caparo, okay. And he is a Cuban born artist who lives in Canada right now. And no, I sought him out. You know, all, you know, I've written a lot of different children's books and I've tried to use different illustrators. It all depends on what the mission mm -hmm. of the book is. What's the, what's the, the message of the book and how best to convey that message to children and to the adults who are reading these books to their children. And so for when I have books on animals, let's say, like the grumpy old ox or the donkey that no one could ride, I use a man named Richard Cowdery, who is just incredible at putting human expressions on, on animals. But this book was different. This book, I wanted to capture um, how incredibly powerful the angels are, almost like superheroes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I wanted to have an artist who uh, was realistic enough so that children didn't, children don't think that these are just make-believe Marvel comic characters. So it had to be a combination between those two things. It also had to be someone who could create these vast, panoramic, sweeping types of paintings, like God creating the mm -hmm. universe mm -hmm. and angels flying through the air. That, that takes a special kind of artist who can do that. And at the same time, an artist who can paint small, little intimate pictures of a, a child under a Christmas tree or, 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 or children playing together or a child in a tent. So it's very hard to find uh, an artist who can do all of that. And I found him in this Antonio uh, Javier Caparo. He can do it all. He's worked with National <laughs> Geographic, he's yeah. worked with all the major publishers, and, and I uh, snagged him for this, uh, for this book. Well, he did an outstanding job because the angels, um, sometimes you, we've seen pictures of angels where they look um, rather, you know, very gentle and easy. And these angels, like you said, there is a superhero, there's, there's a triumph about them. There's a mission about them. There's a strength about them. Mm. Um, and there's a courage about them. And you want them assisting you. You want to believe that they are assisting you and aiding you and guiding you on your journey throughout the course of the day. We say our morning prayers and we, we, at our close of our day, we pray to the Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, and we ask our guardian angel to walk with us and guide us that we would be safe in this day, guarding and guiding our steps and knowing the presence and the power of that angel. Um, we want to work with them because we know God sent them to us to say, you're not alone. You don't, this, I'm going to be a light unto your path. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to protect you. And it, it, there are power encounters. We work at a pregnancy medical center. I go into a counseling room, and you want, there are power encounters. You, sometimes it's, it's darkness against the light that you're encountering. I do not go in there without the presence of my angel. So I love the illustrator, and I love the way how courageous and strong and um, confident the angels are portrayed. Anthony, speak to us about the title of the book. 
How the Angels Got Their Wings. Why that amusing title? Why didn't you say Angels Are Really Strong? You know, something mm -hmm. like, what's with the title? Well, you know, most people have seen that movie, It's a Wonderful Life. I was wondering. <laughs> and in that movie, there's a famous line, every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Yeah. Now, that's not uh, true. Right. That's a fiction. That's just part of a screenplay. But it's a very famous line. And I watched this movie last Christmas, and it occurred to me, you know, after I've seen this movie a hundred times, it occurred to me for the first time, probably because my guardian angel was whispering <laughs> into my ear, yeah. that would make a great title for a book, How the Angels Got Their Wings. Uh, I think uh, piques uh, someone's curiosity. It lets them know that there is a story here. It's mm -hmm. a story, and human beings are attracted to two things, uh, and that's a story and, and a person, mm -hmm. people and stories. That's what attract us and compel us. And so I thought it would be wonderful to write, uh, I thought it would be a wonderful title to get people involved. And anytime you could piggyback off of a, a classic movie, uh, it's something you want to do. Yeah. I said that, right, baby? Yeah, you I said, did. I said, I said, I said, what was the name of the movie, Wonderful Life or something, and you know, the ring and the bell? And you said, it was kind of like, well, no, maybe it's not from there. I mean, it can't be, but see, I was right. I just you, wanted to you, say I, uh, I was right to steal from everywhere that's <laughs> everywhere. Well, no, you're not stealing. You just, ha what you have to say is there's nothing new under the sun. And it's all, right. everything has been already said and done. So we're just borrowing. We're just picking up pieces. Oh. If, only God, only God creates that, out of nothing. That's right. We are right. like God. We create, but we're not creating out of nothing. We can appropriate various. There things. you go. Anthony, share some more. You know where you started out. That um, the power of God creating the angels, and uh, I'm sure with every great purpose and intention, mm -hmm. and and the angels staying good, the angels being bad, and, and kind of the mystery, the power of all that. And it's not just, it's a great story, but it's not just a story. I mean, it's, it's really reality. Uh, unpack that more fully, and where does that show up, you know, in, in your book, God Creating? I think I saw well, it. Well, I think when the very first or second spread in the book, yeah. you have a picture of God the Father creating. That, and he, mm. he should look familiar, because one of the things I told the illustrator was, you know, in, in, in portraying God the Father, don't be afraid to be influenced by Michelangelo and the right. Sistine Chapel ah. ceiling. And yeah. again, you, you know, don't, don't, you know, do some, use greatness. And so he did that, and he's got a beautiful uh, spread of the whole universe there yeah. being created. We don't, you know, it is a mystery. God, we know that he is a God of goodness, and he is life itself and the source of life, and he wants to share that life. He's a kind and gentle, he's a need to create anything, to be happy. He's perfectly content to be happy in the Trinity, the life of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. But because he's so generous and loving, he wants to share that life, and so he creates. And he didn't just create human beings. He also created these pure spiritual beings known as angels. And they, um, they are pure spirits. They, they, they are made in the image and likeness of God also, they have, which means they have an intellect, and they have free will. And as you know, if you have free will, then you have the ability to choose to go against God's will. Mm. And this is part of the story. The angels underwent a period of testing just like we did. Yeah. We, were, we, te we were tested in the Garden of Eden. The angels were tested too. We don't know much about it, but we know that some of the angels didn't like the test very much and out of pride rebelled against God. And we know that the ringleader of those uh, bad angels, those, those demons, was uh, Satan or the devil. Yeah, and the portrayal of that, uh, the scene where they have the, the devil looking there, it, rather sinister and demonic, but real, so that it, it's a beautiful way to teach the children, you know, because, I mean, when we're reading other kind of fictional stories, and certainly in this day and age in which we live, to be rooted and grounded mm -hmm. in everything that is good and true and holy, to say, this really did happen. And there is a power out there, and it doesn't like God, and we need to be wiser because of it, and to help us to see that God gave us angels to assist us and to battle with us and for us as we walk in his light and power and truth. So is it good that it's there, or is it too scary for kids? Mm -mm. <laughs> What? Well, that's a good. It's a good question, and I uh, and I, I don't. There is no way to shy away from that. Right. It's just too much of a part of the story. If you're going to t if, look, you could eliminate the evil and eliminate the demons and the devil, and it could be just like a comic uh, strip. 
But because this is a true story and a real story, and because evil really does exist, mm -hmm. and because children experience evil in their lives and see tragedies and things like that, it's best to teach them about it uh, as young as they as you can teach them. But what you are trying to teach them at the same time is that these forces of evil are not all powerful. Yeah. In fact, forces of good are more powerful than them. And I think we show that very clearly in this book with Michael and the other archangels and God being um, you know, much more powerful than, than evil. But also I want to say that in this book, I, I try to take you know, the early Walt Disney approach. In his movies like Snow White, uh, he was never afraid to show the evil you know, witch or the stepmother. Mm -hmm. And the same with all the classic fairy tales in the world. It's okay to have a dragon, as long as you show that it's possible to slay the dragon mm. all right, with, the, with the power of good. And, and, uh, and, the, and the truth of those fairy tales finds its, its real truth, its root, in this story right here, the story of, of the battle of good versus evil among the angels and, and among a human beings. I think, I think it's excellent, because what you just said is really true. I mean, when children watch Disney movies and there is the Wicked Witch and all this, or even when you watch The Wizard of Oz and there's the Wicked Witch, and we all see that, and it does um, sear you, but the reality is to know that is true, and, and God wants yeah. to aid and assist, and the God inside of you is more powerful than that evil. So be of good cheer, not to worry, not to be afraid. Well, we have one grandchild named after me, James, and whatever he's watching, whatever's going on, he'll, he, if he doesn't get it right away, he'll say to his father, who's the good guy and who's the bad guy? Right. Who's the good guy, who's the bad guy? So there's just something written, you know, upon us. You say about uh, the devil, some stayed good, some turned bad. Mm -hmm. One of them was proud and mad, mad that he was not the king, mad at God for everything. The devil, Satan, that's his name. Either one means just the same. Let some angels to rebel. God cast those demons down to hell. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, that's, and that's got a very scriptural uh, foundation there. You know, the, uh, the, 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 Satan fell from pride. Uh, he said, I will raise my throne above the stars and make myself like the most high in the book of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. um, and also there are references to that pride in the book of Ezekiel and also in the letter of Timothy. So we know that Satan fell because of pride. We know that they wanted to be higher than God. And, it's, and, and it, we see it on our own lives today. I mean, my God, just look at the culture and you see how everyone uh, is, they, they, it's not that they know the difference between good and evil, it's that they want to be the arbiters of what good and evil is. They mm -hmm. want to decide what's good and evil. That's the whole you know, yeah. relativistic culture that, that we're in. And we're back in the Garden of Eden again. It's the same, it's the same choice that Adam and Eve, and ha Eve had. So uh, the angels had it too. Well, you, you spend a good bit of time and it's so pronounced on the archangels. You deal, deal with other angels and what they do. So you start off uh, with Michael because we're speaking about what, what happened with these angels and how could this possibly happen. So speak about how you introduce us to St. Michael and his part in, in that rebellion and trying to deal with it and, and so on. Yes, well, of course, uh, you know, uh, St. Michael is mentioned explicitly in the book of Revelation, uh, where he does battle with Satan and casts uh, Satan out of heaven. Uh, so he is, is known as being uh, uh, the chief of the angels, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, he's the patron of uh, many military uh, armies uh, because he's known to have done battle with Satan. Now, it's very interesting. We could get deep into this, you know, question of angelology, and, yeah. and it's not really something for children. But, of course, when they say there was a war in heaven, you know, angels are pure spirits, so they cannot have a war like uh, with conventional weapons or nuclear weapons. Yeah. The war they have is really a battle of their intellect, a battle of their will. And we know that somehow Michael was involved in pushing Satan away. Uh, God doesn't, doesn't usually wave a magic wand and make things happen. He always uses creatures hmm. to help other creatures. He uses us to save us. And so he used an instrument here, one of the angels, to battle another one of the angels who had fallen. Um, so this is very important for children, too, because, because we are, children are not, um, they, they're involved in their own battles of good versus evil, whether to become naughty or nice, whether to listen to their parents, whether to be selfish or generous. Yeah. They're constantly in the middle of this tug of war, and it's good for them to have 
uh, to be able to go to St. Michael and help, uh, who can help them make the right decisions. Well, yeah, and it's as simple as choosing good behavior, bad behavior, you know? And, uh, you know, it's not like you say, uh, well, the devil made me do it. Well, I, I have free will, and I made a choice to disobey. And I don't want to grow up and in, in be steeped in disobedience and pride because... Um, then we too will perish because that's everybody wants to be their own god these days as it is and you, it's and that's why we have to teach them young to say no you need to be formed you need to be taught you need to know the powers of good and evil and what god wants a good plan for you anthony we just have 50 seconds left so just speak to our family of the importance of the angels and and why your book could be a great help uh, you know, as I said before, angels are real, and we want to tell, tell our children that they're real. Mainly, we want them to know that they never have to be alone in life. Mm -hmm. Not only do they have their family and friends and God, and not only do they have Our Lady and the saints and the sacrament of the body and blood of Jesus, yeah. but God also gives them angels to help them through this journey. Life is very tough. We need all the help we can get. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> stop you know, ignoring those angels, be, be polite to them. Thank them. <laughs> Thanks so much. We look forward to unpacking this more fully uh, tomorrow. I don't think we even went halfway through the book, so mm. lots, lots more to look forward to. How the Angels Got Their Wings, Anthony DeStefano. Get it at EW10RC.com. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and we just finished up a beautiful conversation with Anthony DiStefano on how the angels got their wings. And um, he did take it from the movie, right? Yeah. A Wonderful Life, just to say we always hear that when the bell rings. Um, but it's a, it's to, I think so far, this is one of my favorites because... Um, I love to study angels. I've read books about angels, and to have it, you know, in a children's version, I do look forward to reading with my grandchildren and to know the power in their presence and their assistance and guidance that they're there for us. Don't miss the opportunity to know that and, and to be grateful and thankful to say, come on, angel, walk with me, be with me, yeah. be at my side. So he's going to unpack for us more fully uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. the other archangels, Gabriel, Raphael, but then there's so much more in this book, like you said, Joy, mm -hmm. about different circumstances, situations, what angels do, you know, how they minister uh, safety, how they minister in tragedy, because, you know, everything doesn't turn out all right, mm -hmm. and there's still angels. You know, one might have the question, well, if the, are the angels asleep? Like, what the heck is going on? Mm -hmm. And so there's limits even to what the angels can do. And just such good sound theology and how the angels got their wings. And it just really breaks it down, gives room for you as a parent, grandparent, to elaborate a little further. Deals with the greatness of the angels, God's love for us, God's always with us, the mm -hmm. angels are with us, we're not alone. And yet bad things still happen. Right. And so what the heck is that all about? People's choice, a fallen world, only so much deliverance in this life. But in the end, they usher us into the presence of God and the beatific vision, Lord willing, that we can spend all eternity with Jesus Christ, with all the angels, and with all the saints. Isn't it wonderful to be a Christian? Isn't it grand to be a Catholic? Isn't it awesome to know that God has the final word in Jesus Christ? With the angels, with the angels let us do his bidding while we have time upon the face of this earth. God bless you and all of the loved ones keeping on EWTN. Bye now.